Paladin is one of the most enjoyable classes in Lost Ark, but are you playing it right? Well, this is the guide to make sure you do. Hey everyone, I'm Barkley. We got skills, skill builds, playstyle tips, tripods, gems, card sets, and more. And if you find this video helpful or enjoyable, do me a favor, like and subscribe, and let's get into it. A support paladin has three main jobs, keeping people alive through heals, shields, and buffs, increasing damage dealt by buffing allies and debuffing enemies, and helping with counters, staggers, and destruction. Support builds are more flexible in what skills you'll be using based on the jobs and roles needed for the content. So let's talk about the more commonly used paladin abilities, then we can look at a default skill build and when to use alternative skills. For our first ability, you have charge. This is our primary mobility spell. You'll pick up excellent mobility for more range and shining protection for our own use shield in the skill tree. And you should use quick recharge for the skill rune. Executor sword. Stagger, counter, and weak point all in one ability. It's not mandatory, but you will use this ability a lot. You'll pick up excellent mobility, weak point enhancement, and executioner strike. For your skill rune, you should use either overwhelm or gale wind. Holy sword. It's great damage for a support class, a long range counter, and stagger. This might be the longest range counter in the game. You'll be picking up positioning, outburst of light, and release light in the skill tree. And you'll be using overwhelm for the skill rune with this ability. Execution of Justice. You primarily use this for Chaos Dungeons. Your skill tree choices are Bulwark, Strength Release, Express Fury, or Light Explosion. And you would run this ability with either Gale Wind or Protection. Punishment is a situational ability for when your group is lacking in stagger checks and destruction. The opportunity cost keeps this from getting used more often, but it's a really good ability. Concussion, Piercing Sword, and Double Smite are the skill choices with Overwhelm for your skill rune. For the next ability, we have Light Shock. The short cooldown ranged ability puts the Light's Vestige debuff on the target. The short cooldown on top of stacking swiftness allows you to have 100% uptime on the debuff. Light's Vestige increases the damage dealt to the target by 10%, and having at least one source of this debuff in your build is mandatory. You'll be picking up Swift Fingers, Light's Vestige, and Powerful Shock in your skill tree. And for your skill rune, you'll use Bleed. Light of Judgment. This is a situational ability that's excellent for building your identity gauge, the problem is that it only has this one use, while most of your other abilities have multiple applications. You'll run this with Swift Fingers, Faith, and Righteous Light, and Wealth for the skill rune. God Sent Law. This is probably the most rewarding ability in your kit when used correctly. It's a channeled ability that gives a shield, has damage reduction, and can be used to apply Light's Vestige. Shield and Grace are the mandatory skill tree choices, while in the second row you can either pick Brilliant Law for Light's Vestige, or Wide Angle Attack to make it easier to use on multiple people. But because of the longer cooldown, this isn't a great source of the debuff. Regardless of the choice, this is still a mandatory ability, and for the skill rune, protection and focus are the main picks. Wrath of God, another mandatory ability providing attack power for allies and identity generation for yourself. You'll pick up Wide Thunder Strike, Faith, and Express Fury, and swapping Express Fury for Light's Guardian makes this great for Chaos Dungeons. And use this with a wealth skill rune. Next, we have Heavenly Blessings. Party Wide Mana Regen, attack power for allies, and Identity Generation make this the third mandatory ability. Faith, Valor, and Absolute Blessing are the skill tree choices, with Heavenly Requiem being the Chaos Dungeon alternative. When using this ability in Wrath of God, you're going to cycle them because their attack power buffs don't stack. Holy Protection. This is the fourth mandatory ability that heals, gives a shield, and increases movement speed. Your skill tree choices are Quick Pace, Purify, and Vow of Light. Quick Pace for the 15% movement speed while this is active, Purify removes a debuff on each person who gets a shield from you. Vow of Light heals for 8% max health after the shield expires. The choices Maintained Effect and Robust Protection are used instead of Purify in boss fights where debuffs aren't an issue. And use a Focus Skill Rune with this ability for the best results. Holy Explosion. This very situational ability has Destruction, Stagger, and Light's Vestige. The main drawback of this ability is that its slow cast time makes it clunky. You'll run it with Swift Fingers, Wide Explosion, and the last row is a preference pick. But despite the downsides, it's a staple ability in Chaos Dungeon builds. And run this with Gale Wind. Holy Area. This could be an outstanding ability. It has low cooldown, damage reduction to party members, and decent identity generation. But people don't stand in ground effects, and neither do bosses. If you are in a coordinated group with people who will stand in your ground effect, this becomes a valuable ability. You'll run Quick Prep, Grace, and Endless Grace for the skill tree choices, and Wealth for the skill rune. Let's talk about your awakening skills. First, we have Alethane's Judgment. As a support, this is your only awakening option. A massive party-wide shield that gives you around 80% of your identity gauge when hitting an enemy with the dive. 
and Alethane's Light is for DPS Paladins, Chaos Dungeons, and people who haven't done the Second Awakening quest. Paladins have two options for their identities, Holy Aura and Sacred Executioner. Holy Aura by default gives you and your group a 10% damage increase, and with the class engraving Bless Aura, will provide you with a 20% damage reduction and a 2% max health heal every 1.5 seconds. Sacred Executioner, like Alethane's Light, will only be viable to use in Chaos Dungeons. The build you see on the screen is for content outside of Chaos Dungeons in the open world. You should use this as your default build. Getting comfortable with this will work for most content. While this build can cover all three of the jobs mentioned earlier in the video, you can swap abilities out to better fit your situation. If you're in a fight that doesn't require staggering destruction, you can swap out one of your blue skills for either Holy Area or Light of Judgment. Holy Area if you have a group that will stand in the ground effect and a boss that isn't too mobile. And use Light of Judgment if Holy Area isn't an efficient choice. Light Shock is the best way to keep up Light's Vestige, but God Sent Law will be my second pick to fill the same role. Dropping Light Shock for punishment and running God Sent Law is an example of this. Unlike most DPS builds, support builds are flexible, so you can tailor your setup to the needs of the group. Also having options makes the class more enjoyable as a whole. I like the blue abilities, so I usually run at least three of them because they're more fun than things like Light of Judgment. For the quick rundown on Chaos Dungeons, get Preemptive Strike, Shield Yourself and Never Drink Potions, Face Roll Slap AoE abilities, use Heavenly Blessings to one-shot elites, use Sacred Executioner to extend the range of blue abilities, then finish the dungeon in under five minutes. And let's talk about your tripods. Paladin has flexibility with tripods because gear can upgrade a good portion of the skill tree choices. While sticking with the default build, you'll only need 13 tripods. The five free slots are open to upgrade any alternative abilities you swap too often. And let's go through your default build tripod choices. For Charge, you have Excellent Mobility and Shining Protection. For Executor Sword, you have Executioner Strike. With Holy Sword, you'll be picking up Positioning, Outburst of Light, and Release Light. For Light Shock, the only option is Powerful Shock. For God Sent Law, you'll want Shield. For Wrath of God, you'll be targeting Faith. For Holy Protection, you have Quick Pace and Lingering Power or Robust Protection, depending on which one you use when not running Purify. And for Heavenly Blessings, you have Faith and Absolute Blessing. I'll be using my five remaining slots for island PVP shenanigans. Now let's talk about your gems. You will go for cooldown reduction for all of your abilities for gems since your damage isn't impactful. You then use your remaining slots for damage. For damage gems, I would go in the priority order of Holy Sword, Executor Sword, Wrath of God, then Heavenly Blessings. For your stat spread, you'll go with Swiftness as your primary and Spec for your secondary. Swiftness gives you better uptime on your buffs, attack speed, and movement speed and spec increases the damage from Holy Aura and increases identity generation. The ideal situation is to have spec on your neck with swiftness on everything else. In some cases, picking up spec on rings or earrings can be an option when buying accessories. Now, when talking about your engravings, you have three mandatory engravings. Blessed Aura, Awakening, and Expert. Blessed Aura gives your Holy Aura healing and damage reduction to everyone in the circle of this ability. Awakening reduces awakening cooldown to up to 50% and gives up to three more charges in a fight. Being able to consistently use this to help survive more damaging boss mechanics while also helping you get more holy auras out is a massive boost of utility. Expert increases the shields and heals on all abilities, and the effectiveness increases on targets below 50% health. For your optional engravings, you have Vital Point Strike. This will be the fourth engraving I max. A 36% increase of stagger damage is massive. That's an overwhelm on everything you have. Level 1 Judgment. This doubles the amount of identity you gain from lending your blue abilities increases the damage by 15%, and doubles the duration of Sacred Executioner. But you still won't use it. The identity gain doesn't scale, so anything higher than level 1 isn't worth it. I'm running this until I can get Vital Point Strike at level 3. Heavy Armor. Increases your defense, and this can be your 4th or 5th engraving. In the current state of the game, in most cases, this is overkill. You already have better survivability than most classes, so surviving without it shouldn't be a problem. Spirit Absorption. Increases movement speed and attack speed. It's a good option that I will put slightly behind heavy armor. You can easily consider them interchangeable, but with us stacking swiftness, you won't need all the movement speed granted from this, but the attack speed will make things like countering a lot easier. Drops of ether. This makes your attacks drop ethers on the ground, giving buffs that allies can pick up. Attack damage, movement speed, crit chance, attack speed, mana regen, and damage reduction. These are all great on paper, but pugs may not pick them up. If you're around people who will, I would put this above Spirit Absorption. For your last optional engraving, you have Preemptive Strike. Only used in Chaos Dungeons and Open World, this will speed your solo clears up a lot. Let's talk about your card setups. Your heals and shields scale off of your max HP, so naturally you go for card sets that increase that. 
The Field Boss 2 and Farewell Weapon sets give 12% max health. The Awakening bonuses are for DPS, so you don't need to bother with those. You run these until you get the Lost Wing Cliff set to Awakening 30. This is late game min-max optimization. You would need to set yourself, obviously, and be grouped with people with the Light of Salvation set to even get value from this. And for the Argos Armor set, you'll be crafting the Lunar set to buff your allies that were the opposite set. Most DPS from the Solar set, so we'll use a Lunar. You only need 5 Argos pieces to get the set bonus, so the optimal setup is to have a chosen weapon, with the rest being the Argos set. I also want to go over the playstyle and how to play the Paladin. The basics of this class are simple, and you improve by learning to better manage your buffs and reacting to your group and the boss. The Paladin playstyle consists of 6 things to keep in mind. Keep your Light's Vestige debuff on the target, cycle Wrath of God and Heavenly Blessings attack power buffs while making sure not to let them overlap, cast Holy Protection on cooldown, even if you don't protect someone from taking damage, you'll still get a lot of value out of healing people and removing debuffs. Helping with landing counters, staggering, or destruction. Using Alanthane's Judgment and God Sent Law to save allies from heavy damage. Try to avoid using your Awakening during Holy Aura because you don't generate identity while it's active. Use Holy Aura to keep people full health, but don't forget about the damage reduction and damage increase parts of this ability. And with that, you're good to go. Thanks for watching. There will be a written guide in the description. If you found this helpful, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. Follow me on Twitch, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.